Hi everyone, welcome back. Today on this Toyota Corolla 2012, I'm gonna show you how to test the mass airflow sensor. Having any fault on the mass airflow sensor can make the engine running rough. It can increase the fuel consumption or in some cases, it can stall the engine too. So knowing how to test the sensor is really important because having the faults on mass airflow sensor, it doesn't necessarily mean that the sensor itself is broken. So you may have a faulty sensor or you may have problem on the wiring. So knowing how to test the sensor wiring is really important or how to test the sensor output voltage. So by doing this test, you can reach to that certainty if the sensor is broken or if the problem is from the wiring. So in this video, we're going to have a look at the wiring diagram exactly for this car. So we're going to identify all these wires over here to know which one is which. Then we're going to proceed for inspecting the wiring and the sensor output voltage as well to make sure if the sensor is working properly or not. We have some other videos on the channel for testing the MAF sensor with a scan tool. You can find the link for that video in this video description as well. Before starting the video, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe. You can also find our online course for all engine sensors diagnostic on udemy.com. On this four hours online course, I explain everything about all sensors on the engine. So you will learn a lot about the sensors diagnostic and you will get a certificate of completion. You can find the link to that online course in this video description or the first comment down below. So first of all, we're gonna start by having a look at the wiring diagram for this car. So if we disconnect the connector, I'm gonna show you all the wires one by one. Right now you see the wiring diagram exactly for this car on the screen. So as you see on this sensor, we have five wires. So you need to remember that out of these five wires, three wires belong to the mass airflow sensor and two wires are for intake air temperature sensor. So intake air temperature sensor itself can cause some issues for engine operation. We have one video for testing the intake air temperature sensor on the channel. But in this video, we're gonna focus on the mass airflow sensor itself. So if you look at the wiring, you see pin number one, this pink wire, and the next one that's brown with white strips. These two wires are actually for the intake air temperature sensor. So we're not gonna do anything on those two wires right now for this video, but the other three wires, pin number three, four, five, they are for the mass airflow sensor. So pin number three, as you see, is a black wire, which is this one. This one, as you see on the diagram, is B+, plus, which is the sensor power supply. So it means if ignition switch is on, you should have battery voltage on pin number three. Pin number four is still black. So on pin number four, based on the model gear, you may have a white or black wire. As you see, the diagram shows you white and black. So in this case, on this model is black, which is the sensor ground. And the last one, this purple wire, which is pin number five, this is the sensor output voltage. So it's really important to know that this sensor receives battery voltage from the fuse box. So it means when ignition switch is on, you should have battery voltage right here. And the last one is the sensor output signal, okay? So in some cases, if you have mass airflow sensor problem, it could be just because of some contamination on the sensor. So it means you can't take the sensor out to check it visually or to clean it with mass airflow sensor cleaner. But if you have a fault code like P0101, P0102, or P0103 for mass airflow sensor problem, you need to do this inspection. You can go step by step to check the power supply or to check the output signal, or you can start directly from the output signal because if output signal is within the range, it means the sensor is providing proper output voltage and it cannot be done without having a power and ground. So it means if you check the output voltage right here on the sensor and you are getting proper value, it means sensor is good, power supply is good, ground is good as well. But I'm gonna go step by step to identify the problem. But before that, you need to remember any fault on the mass airflow sensor, it can cause by the sensor itself, it can cause by the connector. So you need to check the connector for any contamination or moisture. 
it could be caused by any of these wires or it could be caused by the ECM because ECM receives the information from the sensor and use it as a control logic. But we need to consider the ECM as the last option because that's not very common to have ECM problem in these cases. So the most common one is the sensor itself or the wiring. So I'm gonna back prop the pin number three, which is sensor power supply and pin number five, which is sensor output voltage. And then connector is connected. So this is the sensor power supply and the red one is sensor output voltage. So I'm gonna start one by one to check the sensor power supply, then we go for the output voltage. So ignition switch is on right now. On multimeter, I select voltage. Black prop of multimeter on a good ground and red one on the power supply. So you can select from here. So as you see, we are getting 12.3, which is the battery voltage. So this confirms that the sensor is receiving the power supply from the fuse box. If you don't have this power supply, of course, you will have no output signal generated by the sensor and you will have a fault code. But you need to remember, even if this power supply is provided from the fuse box, there is no specific fuse only for the MAF sensor. So on the diagram, the relevant fuse for this one is a 10 amp EFI number one fuse which is not only for the MAF sensor, it's for a couple of other components as well. So having any problem on that fuse is gonna show you a couple of other problems too. But if you don't have power supply in here, you need to actually check this wire all the way from here to the fuse box. It could be the connector here, it could be the wiring in between, or connector on the fuse box itself. So if you are getting the power supply, you, you need to go to the next step to check the sensor output voltage. Right now, in this case, I don't have any problem on this car. I'm just explaining how to diagnose the mass airflow sensor if you have any issues. So ignition switch is on right now. Of course, engine is not running. If I check the output voltage, as you see, sensor is generating 0 0.75. But of course, right now, there is not much air going toward the engine. We need to start the engine to read the sensor output voltage when engine is running. Let's start the engine and see what's gonna happen. All right, engine is running right now. I'm gonna put the multimeter up here. And on the sensor, as you remember, this one was the sensor output voltage. We back prop the sensor output voltage using this back prop. And if I check the voltage right now, you see the sensor is generating 1.4 right now. So this voltage is a little high right now for the MAP sensor because it should generate something very close to one when engine is running at idle, something between 0 0.9 to 1.2. But right now engine is cold, that's why the mass airflow sensor is generating a little higher voltage. And you see it's dropping gradually. So if you leave the engine running for a while, when it's warmed up, you see that the output voltage of the sensor should be dropping. So you see that sensor is showing you lower voltage gradually. So you see the value keeps falling. If you are checking the output voltage, if you are not getting anything, considering that we have already checked the power supply and ground is okay, it means that the sensor itself is broken. You have to replace the sensor. If you are getting a constant high voltage, like a 12 volt, it means the output voltage of the sensor is shorted to the power supply. That's why you are getting battery voltage. So having this kind of reaction that sensor generates a little high voltage at the beginning and then it keeps dropping when engine is warming up, it means the sensor is measuring the output voltage and it's responding properly. Or if sensor is not measuring anything or something very low, it could be just a bad sensor. You need to remember, even if the sensor is generating a voltage, for example, we are expecting something very close to 1, 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 if sensor is measuring something like 1.8, it's gonna cause bad fuel consumption because 1.8 is representing too much air is going toward the engine and ECM is gonna inject more fuel. So which is gonna end up to have a bad fuel consumption and you will have system to reach fault code on O2 sensor. If sensor is generating a slightly lower voltage, it means less air is going toward the engine, ECM is gonna inject less fuel, and that's gonna cause 
engine low power or engine is gonna run rough as well. But right now you know all these wires, you know how to identify the wires and how to check the sensor with multimeter to make sure if sensor is bad or if sensor is good. But you need to remember something else. If sensor is working properly and your measurement over here, the output voltage over here is good, but you still have the fault code or the live data on the scanner is showing you something different from what you measured in here, it means that could be the problem through this wire to the ECM. Sometimes you are not getting proper value when you are reading with the scan tool, but when you check it with the multimeter over the sensor, you are getting good value. So that shows the wiring problem in between, between the sensor and ECM or ECM problem. So in that case, you need to take this measurement, the output signal on the ECM connector to make sure if there is a problem on the wiring or on the ECM itself. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to visit the channel page for more diagnostic videos.